So what has two legs and flies? Mike Pence. And then Robin and Batman are speaking and they're on an excursion or whatever. And Robin says to Batman, Batman, the Batmobile won't start. And Batman says, well, have you charged the battery? To which Robin replies, what's a Terry? And finally, finally, what kind of music do windmills listen to? Well, they're big metal fans. Oh, welcome to Shave and Butcher. Today's Friday. Thank the Lord it's Friday and it's it's um, Fat Friday. So Mitchell's Wool Fat from Bradford in Yorkshire. I'm going to whip that up with Frank and Matty's pig brush. So it's a Samoog boar thing and the, you know the drill. We've seen this before. So let's let's see if we can do a good job whipping that up. Mitchell's wool fat is a little bit infamous for being tricky to lather. And I hadn't used it for quite some time, but I used it yesterday and it was nice. So let's try it again. Why not? And I was I was thinking, I was putting the phone up there and looking into the mirror and looking at myself, which I do a lot of. I mean, who can blame me, right? And I was thinking, you know, the only hair I have on, on the head is, are my eyebrows. And they keep growing. Why is that? Isn't that a little bit strange? I mean, I, the older I get, I get more and more hair everywhere. I'm sure you want to hear this. <laughs> but I, have, I have hair everywhere. Chest hair, hair on the back, hair on God knows what. And I get that, you know, the older you get, the less you run, so you, God gives you hair to keep warm, or, or at least that's how I explain it. But the eyebrows, you know, okay, once in a while, one comes off when you're wrestling with a, a bear. I'm thinking Stone Age time when the DNA that we have was created but why I have to cut mine very strange so leave your comments below if you if you're a, if you're a facial hair expert um, with a degree on eyebrows I don't know it's weird so I cut them M mainly I I don't pay attention to it but where I, we have this uh, senior manager who likes to comment on people's appearance and you know typically haircuts and stuff like that and strange color of shirts and whatever and uh, in a nice way it's not annoying at all um, we, we do love him actually um, but he would as a way of starting a conversation he would look at you and comment something that is a little bit odd so when I had a mustache and a beard obviously had a had a bit of a field day except now he has a bit of a beard. But anyway, he, he, he's the only one, including my wife, who comments, and not infrequently, on the <laughs> on my eyebrows. Those need a bit of a trim, old chap, sort of thing. And I go, really? And, and then, like a good boy, I go home and I trim them, obviously. But, but why do they keep growing? Is there, I mean, the, the purpose of eyebrows, and you notice that more if you're bald, is the only purpose is keeping rain out and sweat, I guess, if you ever sweat, but I have an office job, so I don't sweat, out of your eyes. That's like, and dirt or whatever. That's the only purpose of eyebrows that I can, that I've discovered in my, 48 years of living on this earth with eyebrows. So why do they keep growing? Why do you have to trim them? And I guess more so when you get older. What's the, how does that help me fight a bear, you know? Because there has to be a bear fighting element to everything evolutionary, at least if you're 
living in a country where there are bears. I've never seen a bear outside a zoo, but in the way the north there are bears. I know a guy who hunts bears. He got a few just the other week. He's a straight razor shaver. Sold him my weight and butcher. Mainly because, you know, he shoots bears. He should have a weight and butcher chopper. He really should. I shouldn't. I work in a freaking office. It's ridiculous. Okay, so we're, we've got the Mitchell's wool fat, which in terms of smell, just smells like a um, combination of, I mean, my grandparents had, they were farmers and they kept sheep. So it smells a bit like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's lanolin. So it doesn't smell, smell like the meat, really. It does smell a little bit like the, the fur. You know, when I grew up, we had sheep fur everywhere, and they sort of had names for Rosa and Belle and whatever they were called. Because after a while, you you know, you don't keep them as, as pets, keep them as income, so you have to get the meat out of them, and then you have the fur, which or the skin rather, which you know ends up at on your floor. We must have had ten of those. Cats loved them. We had cats growing up and they would pee on every one of them. So there, uh, there was a finite lifetime of those, those first. And this doesn't smell exactly like that, but that's the, the part of the sheep that it reminds me of. So it's caked onto the face. I'm adding water. This stuff according to the manufacturer, has been manufactured in Bradford, Yorkshire since 1893, is it? Uh, 1893. The original formula, um, you know, that may not be true because there must have been some discovery of something along the way. But it's pretty cool. So that's what you get in Bradford, curry and Mitchell's wool fat. If you're not English and you don't know what curry is, you Google it. So is it a nice scent? Well, I don't know. It's not like one of those posh, metrosexual American sort of soaps. It's a soap for a lad, it's a man's soap. I think you're supposed to feel like, yeah, 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 this is what it smells like when you're cooking dinner. Which if you're a man in Yorkshire in the 1800s, cooking dinner is chopping up the sheep, which your woman will cook for you. I, I don't know. I mean, my only experience of, of England is Yorkshire and the north of England, and it's, it's been a while. So down south, it may be different. I was, on a, I was on a pretty important call today for the first time with a gentleman that, okay, confidential and everything, so we'll concentrate on what we're saying, but a, a gentleman that we might, or at least I am interested in hiring, and he's English. So I've talked to him on the phone. I've never met him, so got a bit serious conversation, um, like a third date sort of thing. So I said, you know, let's do a, oh, it doesn't taste bad, it's just lather in the mouth. Let's do a video conference and you know, in sort of <laughs> North English fashion, the first thing I ever said when it came up on the screen was, oh, thank God, you're not as ugly as you sound. <laughs> to which his retort was, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. So he, but he's a Southerner. So he took it like a, a, a lad. 
that. But I don't know, is, is, is the English viewers can comment. But everyone I know is sort of from the north, although some live in the south. Well, yeah, you'd be well equipped, equipped to comment. Is the discourse different in the north and the south of England in, in that sense? Because in the north of England, you know, in my shallow experience, having lived there for a year, if you if you take the piss like really badly out of someone, that's sort of a compliment. That that's uh, you know, fuck you're ugly is the closest a northerner will get to saying, I love you, man. Um, we're doing a weck shave, not because it's Yorkshire masculine, but because it's uh, the best shaving tool in the world. I mean, prove me wrong, comment, if you don't agree, comment what, what else would be as good as a wick. You know, if you've tried different things. I'm not a DE expert. I've tried a few DEs. I've tried a few single edge safety type racers. I've tried a lot of straight racers, a lot from all over the world. Expensive, cheap, whatever, different hound. And I've tried a, a bunch of Chevette type racers. Nothing's close to a wick. Nothing. And you got to carve. Da, da, da. I haven't tried, but if you've tried a wick, like really tried it more than once, tried it a few times, and you find something, battery, something else is better, let me know. I'd be genuinely interested because wow maybe i use this too often on the channel it just, it's just so damn good um you can cut yourself and i probably will and i think maybe i did this will be shave number approximately 15 of the blade which is a christmas blade and god it's good Oh, before I forget, oh. did I cut my nose? Okay, even if you have a good race, if you're an idiot, it doesn't help. Before I forget, Avind a Kaisen has taught me about half of what I've learned in the last year because <laughs> even you're such a fount of knowledge on a number of shaving channels but he taught me in a comment the other day on a video that orchid uh, you know like the flower comes from the Greek word orchis and that means testicle testicle and I, I didn't go further than that that was amazing enough so Okay, I'm amused by low, you know, below the belt type humor and everything. But isn't that, isn't that a, a reasonably good thing at a dinner party if there's been a bit of drinking to bring up? Or if there's no drinking. <laughs> and it's just, you know, it helps if the conversation is on flowers, otherwise it will be a bit, a little bit weird. But that's such a good piece of information. And it's true. Thank you, Avind. Avind, in his usual way, didn't say, oh, I mean, this. he just said, you might want to Google the Greek spelling orchis. <laughs> Thank you, appreciate that. Um, the lather is a little bit on the dry side. Now, the thing with the weck is, it doesn't matter what soap you have. Your post shave feeling will be different if it's 
uh, butter or whatever in it. But in terms of getting a close shave and a comfortable shave and no nicks, really doesn't matter what you use. You need some lubricant, but I wager olive oil or yeah, just plain butter will work approximately as well as a, as a, as a an expensive artisan soap. So how many shaving devices can you say that about? Now I'm brutally honest when I say, kinda doesn't matter what soap you have. I can take, well, I'm not gonna give examples, but I, you know, I can take anything, even stuff that doesn't lather. Okay, I'll, you know, I can take a Williams soap and just put that on my face. I won't try to make a lather because I can't, because I'm crap at that. and. I know people are good, some people are good at it, but it's slick enough, right? So I can put that on, have no lather, and have a good three pass shave with a wick, and it would be just as good as a Mitchell's Wool Fat or a, you know, Humphy Dumphy PEA, whatever. So, really, you know. In terms of the feeling afterwards and the buttery and the creaminess and mm, the experience might be different if you focus on that, which we do and I do. But the work is so damn good, it sort of doesn't matter. I love my straight razors. I shave with straights more often than chevettes. Um, but I, I have to agree with Chris Bailey today, he had a video, I think it was today, at least I watched it today, where he said that, uh, you know, he's, he's tried pretty much everything and he's saying he's not an experienced straight racer or chevette shaper, but he hasn't come across anything as smooth and efficient as chevette or weck. Might have said wick, because that's what he used today. And I agree. And this is use number, I'm going to call it 15. And I'm going to get a perfectly smooth shave. And it's going to be irritation free. I may cut myself or get weepers, but I do that with most things anyway, because as Jim says, the, my blood is too close to my skin. By the way, if I didn't apologize enough about knocking the presidential candidates in the American election, and if I said anything that remotely makes you think I meant I want to strap those two guys in the front of a car and drive them into a hole, that's not true. I genuinely apologize. I'm proud to be part of the same species. As politicians in general. Like we have a welder for a, well, we don't have a president, we have a prime minister. We have a welder for a prime minister. Is so, so that good? That's good. Germany has that lady that's a hundred years old and has ruled the country for the last 30 or so years. So that's good. And Britain has a leader which, who, as far as I understand, makes his hair look in the way that he appears to be a, an escapee of a mental in institution, so that's good. So yeah, a lot of good weepers there. That's me.
Oh, it's time to pay the raffle, by the way. Most people have, but if you... The raffle's over, my raffle, our raffle. The raffle to save the world. Please pay. Check out the Facebook group. And if you don't, or if you're not on Facebook, comments or email me or whatever, and I'll sort you out. Ah. Ah. Focus. This is why we need a cure. That's more blood than usual. I don't know why I did. Sorry, sticking to the blade. It's a bit too dry. because outside is, is the street and there's this neighbor we have, which I, I don't know him. I've barely seen him. My daughter who moved out about a year ago, comment, saw him this afternoon and commented that oh, he's a bit of a creep. So I thought, you know, should I hit him or something? But um, that's not really my strength. So she said no, which was a huge relief. But anyway, he... He's got this huge SUV Volvo thing and he left his, his lights on about three hours ago and they're still on, so that's good. <laughs> it's not this, quite the same thing as hitting him on the head, which I didn't have a reason to do because he hasn't done anything. He just appears creepy or whatever. Okay, I put too much. Uh, I'm just gonna do, you know. But he left his lights on at... Yeah, call it four hours ago. So um, let's just hope he has an important meeting in the morning because he ain't gonna get to it, that's for sure. It's a lot more blood than usual. I do apologize. Much like Jim, Jim will shave. I need a recoat of the skin, I think. I've shaved so much, it's gone thin. Oh, look, there as well. Hey. This is all gonna go away pretty quickly. It's a bigger one. It's not a cut, it's a weeper, but it's gonna go away. But it might be a sign I will want to change the blade. Because typically that's, if it gets like that, you sort of do. I don't strop it. Maybe I should. I think Mutti did for a while, strop his Kismet blades just to see if they could last longer. Maybe Dr. Matt did as well, actually. But the, as far as I remember, the results were inconclusive. Oh, I've been meaning to ask you, would you appreciate if I do a pantomime shave? Still feels comfortable, but there is a lot of blood. I think maybe this is the last shave with this blade. 15, 20 shaves sort of is typically what I get out of a Kismet blade and I don't know how many I've had. It's at least 15, it might be more. So I'm gonna rinse and take care of these babies and I'll be right back. Yeah, we're changing blades. Still smooth enough, it feels okay, but it's a little bit treacherous and there was just, just putting cold water on it was a little bit more stingy than usual. Stetsons, Stetson, 
present from John Line. Thank you, John. This is good stuff. I like this stuff. Very basic, not expensive, not fancy. I just enjoy it. Oh, well, new blade. That's for sure. That is for sure. It just smells good. Guys and gals, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. I'll see you soon. We'll do a shave in a few days, maybe three or four days. We'll think of something interesting, hopefully. And um, yeah, have a brilliant weekend, all of you. Please do enjoy yourselves as much as you can. You might be dead on Monday, so enjoy the weekend and uh, stay sharp. <laughs>